Yeah, up everyone. Right, so I've done a, a bit on this for a while, so I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on the whole gaming front. What's going on in the gaming world? So, last time I spoke to you, um, I just kind of got dragged back into playing Grand Theft Auto again. I had a massive fallout with Rockstar Games because of because of the way that the game don't fucking work, do you know what I mean? You spend most of your time sat around waiting for things to happen and not actually doing anything, do you know what I mean? And I did a whole video about 101 things that are wrong with Grand Theft Auto. Um, and I just got to a point where I was pissed off with it and I, I was just, I just felt like the game was just messing me about and stuff. So I stopped playing and I started playing the Elder, Elder Scrolls and some other games that I was playing. <laughs> And I didn't play Grand Theft Auto, and I didn't play it for like three months or something. And then, in one of my social media feeds, I saw this thing where... They were offering like double experience and double money or something, and I thought, oh, it might be a good way to like level my character up or whatever. So I kind of got dragged back into playing Grand Theft Auto again. But what was quite funny is, in that intervening period of like three months, a lot of the problems that I'd highlighted or, or had fallen out with the game, or they'd actually fixed them, they'd fixed them in this like three months. So actually, the experience of playing the game wasn't as bad as what it had been before. Um, so so I kind of got dragged back into playing Grand Theft Auto, and that became my like dominant game and stuff like that. Well, um, things have changed quite a bit since then. Um, so basically, I bought, I bought a PlayStation 5, um, it's, a, it's a decent piece of kit, it's about the same size as like a first generation PlayStation 4, quite a big chunky thing. And the problem is there's not that many PlayStation 5 games around that like use all the like new features and stuff of it, so it's pretty difficult to judge how good a console it is. But PlayStation 4 games work a lot quicker. Like like I say with like Grand Theft Auto, there's a lot of sitting around waiting for things to happen. But with the PlayStation 4, it makes it a lot quicker, right? So basically even like signing into the game is like half, it takes half the amount of time that it used to take before. So that's pretty good. There's not really that much difference between the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. The user interface is almost exactly the same. Um, so if you've ever used the PlayStation 4, you'll know exactly how to use the PlayStation 5. Um, one of the features that's is completely fucking pointless is that like on the controller like right here there's a speaker right so like if you if you play a game like grand theft auto or elder scrolls where it's a multiplayer game and people talk to one another and stuff right yeah usually you do like put some headphones on and you can talk to them and hear them right but anyhow they've built it into the controller but the thing is it don't it's proper shit right the speaker is too quiet, you can't hear what people are saying, you can just hear this crackling and it's, you can't understand anything that anybody's saying. So it just becomes a bit annoying, you, te you tend to just turn, put it onto mute so you don't have to listen to these people and you don't have to do it. Well that, then that's like going completely against a multiplayer game, do you know what I mean? It should be encouraging you to talk to people, not putting barriers up and stuff. So that's one of probably the main criticisms that I've got of the PlayStation 5 is the speaker in the, in the thing is just not, it's not loud enough, you can't hear what the person's saying. It's a bit annoying, really. But anyway, so I've gone on to PlayStation 5 and I've basically been transferring my PlayStation 4 games over onto PlayStation 5. That's been a bit of a nightmare. Any of the games that came with a disc, it won't, it won't install them, right? So you put it in and it starts installing and then it just pops up and says, can't install, can't install. I got in touch with PlayStation, they can sort it out, they can figure it out. So basically I've had to buy the games again, right, on digital and download them and then I can get them to play. And this is a bit of a pain in the ass, you know what I mean? It's costing me more money. Um, so, so like I said, I was playing Grand Theft Auto, but, um, the thing that's like kind of like turned me off from playing Grand Theft Auto really is that like do you know like when you play a game there's like things that motivate you to play the game do you know what I mean like that can be like whatever leveling up or getting money or collecting certain things or whatever it is you know, like on Elder Scrolls games, there's a million and one things where you can set your own objectives of what it is you want to do, and then that's the motivation for you to play the game. 
Grand Theft Auto basically has two motivational things built into it. One is levelling up, and the other one is money. Right, but so the thing is, at the, um, at the moment, like, like, my highest level character is like 260 something, yeah? The thing is that you get to end game at level 120, right? So when you're playing the game up to level 120, as you level up, new things become available for you. Do you know what I mean? Like you can buy a new weapon or a new car or, or whatever, or you can buy a house or whatever, but you have to be at a certain level before you can do certain things, right? So leveling up gives you certain bonuses and makes the game better and whatever, right? But the thing is, once you get to a level 120, there are no more rewards after that. All what happens is your level goes up, but that doesn't change anything. So like, I'm level 260, but if I was level 360, that would make no difference to the game to me at all, right? It makes no difference what level you are after level 120. So, so that's no motivation to me, do you know what I mean? I don't get anything by levelling up, so that's not something that I'm going to be focusing on doing, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so the other thing was money, right? Now the thing is, like, the entire game of Grand Theft Auto is based around money, right? You need money to do anything. And you get locked into this cycle of making money and making money, and that's what you do, and that's, that's a lot of, lot of what the game is early on, right? But the thing is, that, like, as you get higher levels and stuff you start accumulating money like left right and center right so now it's it's got to the point where i've basically bought everything that i can buy in the game i've got all the houses all the cars all the weapons everything that you can buy i've already bought it right so there's nothing for me to buy so now what happens is just the money is just building up right but it's pointless i've got 40 41 million $42 million right now. So what? There's nothing for me to buy. So what's the point of having all that money? Do you know what I mean? It's of no point. It's of no use to me whatsoever, right? So now it's, you kind of get to a point where there's no motivation to play other than just you enjoy playing the game, yeah? Um, and I do enjoy playing the game. I do enjoy playing the game. I like doing missions and I like doing heists and stuff. But it's just... The thing is that, like, it's just getting to a point where... It's not a challenge for me anymore, do you know what I mean? Like, I've done all the heists so many times that I could probably do them in my sleep, do you know what I mean? And I'm just kind of going through the motions on an autopilot because I know where all the enemies are, do you know what I mean? So I know how to avoid them and there's just no challenge there for me. And there aren't any been any new content for months, so there's nothing new for me to do. All I'm doing is repeating things over and over that I've done before, do you know what I mean? And to be fair, that gets a bit boring. So, so what I did, and I mentioned this in my last video, is that essentially what I've been motivating myself to do is helping low-level characters, really. <laughs> so what I... So, like, when you do heists, Heist to like these big event things that you do with a group of four people. Well, usually four people. Um, but whatever, you get a group of people together and you do this thing. It's usually quite complicated and quite complex. And you have to do things at certain times and you have to work together in order to be able to achieve this thing, right? And the way that heists work is that there are set up missions. So you might have three or four or five missions to do first. And then you've got the finale, right? And the finale is where you make money, yeah? So there might be 400, 500, a million dollars up, up for stake in this finale, right? So, usually before, when I got to the finale bit, I'd only really play with high-level characters, do you know what I mean? Because, for, for a start off, I wanted the money, right? So I was, I, was, I was trying to get money so that I could buy things, yeah? So I wanted the maximum amount of money, yeah? Now, if I play with high-level characters, they're not going to be bothered about money because they're going to be in a situation where they've got, they've got more money than they know what to do with. They don't need any more money. So they're not bothered whether I take all the money or not, right? So that's basically how I was playing the game. And then, like I say, I got myself into a situation where I've got more money than I could possibly spend. Do you know what I mean? There's more money than I could, I could possibly know what to do with at all. Um, 
And so then, so then what I've been doing is I decided that rather than just play with high level characters and also if you play with high level characters they're generally more likely to know what they're doing and so you're more likely to be able to get through the quest easy enough do you know what i mean so then i decided well what i'm going to do is i'll play with high level characters but one of the characters i'll bring a low level character in yeah and then when we get to the finale i'll just give him all the money do you know what i mean and this is great, and I've, I've really fucking enjoyed doing this, right? So basically, like, if you're, like, level 12, and I give you $400,000, man, that's a ridiculous amount of money for such a low-level character. A low-level character would never see anything like that amount of money. Do you know what I mean? Nowhere near that amount of money would you get at a low level. So if I give you a shitload of money, that means I can change your life in the game. Do you know what I mean? You can buy all the good weapons, you can get a good car, and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? It's proper game changing for these low level characters. Well, that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing. And that's where I've been getting the fun from the game is helping these low level characters and making their game a lot easier and stuff. And it's really cool. And I get loads of really cool messages off people. You know, how I've changed their game and stuff. I've made loads of friends and stuff through doing this. So that's basically what I'm doing right now is I'm just doing one heist a day and focusing upon giving these low level characters a ridiculous amount of money to change their day and stuff like that so that's what i've been doing with it but then what i've been doing is like i said i, I basically put my playstation 4 games into my onto my playstation 5 right so i moved my playstation 4 into the den and then i got all my games and i moved them in there and i was like looking through my, my games and i found skyrim right and i was like oh my god i haven't played skyrim for ages i it's years since I last played Skyrim. And I think that Skyrim is probably one of the best games that's ever been made. It's massive, it takes forever to play it. And I have spent ridiculous amounts of time playing this game, right? You can play the game in loads of different ways. You can play as a mage, you can play as an archer, you can play as a warrior or sneak thief or whatever, right? There's loads of different ways that you can approach the game in Skyrim and I've played every single way that you can play it, right? On one playthrough, I played 360 hours, 360 hours in one playthrough. And I still didn't finish the game then. So I was like, maybe I should have a game I got Skyrim, yeah? So anyhow, so I tried to install Skyrim on my PlayStation Five, and it wouldn't allow me to, to wouldn't allow me to install it. Right, so I had to buy it again. Right, so I went on to to store to buy it again. Anyhow, there's a new version of it out. Right, so so like in order to play computer games, you can there's different methods you can use. You can use a PlayStation, you can use an Xbox, or you can use a PC. Yeah, you can use a computer. I think about computer if you play it on a computer is that they have these things that are called mods, yeah? They're basically like small pieces of software that like fans of the game have written themselves and when you install it on top of the game, it changes something in the game. It might be the rules of the game or it might be add new characters or new places or stuff like this, yeah? It basically modifies, that's why it's called a mod, modifies the game in some way, right? And that's one of the beauties of playing it on a computer is you get loads of these mods and you can play around with the game and make it play and do and work how you want it to do and it's quite fun yeah well i've always been a console person i've always had a playstation so i've never really played a game with mods do you know what i mean so i didn't really know what that was like anyhow this new version of skyrim has got a load of mods built into it that you can change and play around with it and stuff right which i didn't i didn't know it had that so when I bought the game again, I then got all these mods, right? Which then meant I can play the game in a completely different way. And oh my God, these mods are just unbelievable. They're amazing, right? So, so like there's loads of things that I've changed on it, but I think one of the ones is like, I like to play as a vampire, right? But the way that the vampire thing was set up was stupid. So it was basically, you, you gained in levels as a vampire if you didn't eat. Yeah, if you went and bit somebody, it lowered your level. But you don't want to be playing it at a low level. You want to be playing it at a high level, don't you? So, so, so you, it forces you not to eat. Well, that seems counter to being a vampire. If you're a vampire, surely you go out and bite people. Do you know what I mean? And so, so one of these mods switches it round. So in order to go up in levels, you have to bite people, right? Which makes it much more realistic. 
But there's loads and loads and loads of other mods that just change the game amazingly. So, so I've been kind of, I've been kind of playing that for a while. I've been playing Skyrim. I've played a, quite a, a, a lot of hours of it. Really enjoying it. It's been really good. But then, through playing Skyrim, it's kind of um, got me back into playing Elder Scrolls Online. Um, now, before I started playing Grand Theft Auto, Elder Scrolls Online was my main game. That's what I played. I played it every day, all the time. Um, I don't know how many hours I've spent playing that, but quite a lot. Um, I'm a really high level character. I run one of the largest guilds in the game and stuff. I'm quite high up in it, right? But the thing is that, like, I haven't, play, I haven't played Elder Scrolls for ages and ages, right? And I was like, oh, I should I have got Elder Scrolls? So when I went on, then there was loads of downloads. There was, like, like DLCs and stuff, upgrades for the game to, to download. So I've downloaded all those, so I've got loads of new new stuff to do. Because the thing about Elder Scrolls as well is that I'm at, I'm at end game. I've basically done everything. Do you know what I mean? There's mainly like dailies and stuff that I do, because there's not many missions left for me to do. So I've basically done them all. So but now there's like a load of new stuff that's been downloaded that I haven't done, so I'm basically started playing that again as well. So I'm kind of vacillating between playing Skyrim and playing Elder Scrolls. And it's getting that I'm playing Elder Scrolls a lot more than what I was before. So, so yeah, guys, um, that's basically where I am in my gaming world. I'm back playing Elder Scrolls. Um, I'm playing Skyrim. <laughs> and um, I am playing Grand Theft Auto, but I'm only doing one, one heist a day with it because it's just frustrating. It's like, like now, I'm, 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 I'm sat here waiting for a group. I've just been talking to you for 15 minutes. I'm still waiting for a group to be formed on Grand Theft Auto. That's how frustrating it is. 15 minutes. Whereas if I wasn't talking to you, I'd be just sat here staring at the screen, waiting for people to join my group. This is no fun. That's not, that's not playing a game. That's sat staring at a television screen. That's not playing a game. And it's no fun doing that. Do you know what I mean? But I'm kind of motivated by the whole help low level characters thing that um that, that's that's what i'm wanting to do and that's why i'm still playing it so yeah guys if you want to find me you're more likely to find me now playing the elder scrolls um rather than grand theft auto so yeah get in touch